I'm Jeremy and I'm a product specialist at Abstract. In this video, we're going to look at how to install Instamat for Blender, as well as how to create a material instance. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Blender and I want to show you how to install the Instamat for Blender integration. So let's go to the edit menu and go to the preferences panel. And we want to make sure that we're on the add-ons tab here. So next, let's go ahead and click install. And you need to navigate to the Instamat for Blender.zip file that you've downloaded. So let's go ahead and click on that and click Install Add-on. And now all we need to do is enable it. So we'll go over to Instamat for Blender. If you don't see it here, you can search for it with this search box. Go ahead and click the checkbox here, and it's now enabled. So now that the Instamat for Blender add-on has been enabled, let's go ahead and go to the Shading tab. This is where we're commonly going to be using the Instamat for Blender integration. And so in order to bring up the integration, what we need to do is press the N key. If we press the N key, you can see that we now have an Instamat tab here. So let's go ahead and click on it. And you can see this is the Instamat for Blender integration panel. Now, there are a couple of paths that we need to set up in order to complete the installation for Instamat for Blender. The first thing we need to do is supply the Instamat Studio path. Now, this path is where the Instamat Studio application resides on your computer. So you go ahead and click on this icon here and go ahead and navigate to that path to find Instamat Studio. The next path you need to do is the user path. Now, this path is where your Instamat Studio user folder resides, and it's commonly in your user's documents folder under Instamat Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and add that now. So you can see here, this is what my user folder looks like. It's under my username, documents, Instamat Studio in this case, and I'll go ahead and hit accept. Now, the last path that we need to assign here is the export path. And this is where Instamat for Blender is going to generate the texture files, the texture maps as images and place them in this folder. So I'm going to go ahead and use my user folder that I use here, but there's a texture subfolder inside of that. So again, I'm going to navigate to that folder. And you can see here there's a textures folder for us. And so this is where I'm going to place it in this case. So I'll go ahead and hit accept. And now that completes the installation for the Instamat for Blender integration. So now that the integration has been installed, let's take a look at how we can bring in a material. So you can see on the right here, this is our main panel, and we're in the Library Browser tab. And this is where we can browse through all the materials that are included with Instamat Studio, as well as packages that you have in your user library. And so let's quickly take a look at how we can create a material instance. That's what happens when we bring a material from Instamat into Blender, and we can tweak some of the settings. So you can see we have the Category Browser here. We also have a search box. I'm going to go ahead and find uh, a material that I want to bring in. So let's go to the ground category and I'm going to go to concrete. I think that's a great one to start with. And so we can now scroll through. We see some previews here of all these different materials. I think I'm going to go ahead and click this, uh, this cracked concrete here. So I'm going to go ahead and click this little play button here. We can see a large preview of the material. Now, there's something we have to do before we create this material instance, and that is we need to make sure that this object that we're applying the material to has a uh, material assigned to it in Blender. So I'll go ahead and create a new material. I have the plane selected, and I'm in this material tab here. I'll go ahead and hit new. And so now we have an active material uh, that we can adjust, and Instamat is able to connect this material to this Blender material automatically for us. Now, to have Instamat for Blender automatically uh, connect the material that we're bringing in to this active material, we have to have this Connect to Active Material checkbox enabled. And we can give a name to the instance that we're going to be creating uh, here if we need to. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and click Create Instance. And so Instamat for Blender has automatically brought in this material and it's hooked up all of our nodes that we need uh, down here, as you can see. So I'm just going to go ahead and make some room so I can adjust the layout so we can see what's going on here. You can see that we have our instance and it's automatically hooked up all the nodes that we need to make this material appear on this, uh, this model, this asset as it should. So now you can also see that we've been brought to the Instance Settings tab as well. And this is where we can select our instances and make adjustments to the materials that have been brought in from Instamat Studio. So you can see we have different properties like adjusting the concrete color or the resolution of the texture itself. Pretty cool. And we also have this seed parameter, which allows us to dial in and uh, create different variations of this material. 
So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and click this seed button here, and I'll just type in a number very randomly here. And you can see that Instamat's automatically updating the graph instance, and we get a new version of our material. Let's say, for example, I want to dial in this grass density, for example. I want to remove all the grass uh, from this material. I can go ahead and just click that here. And if I want to, I can use a slider. If I want to, actually clicked away for a second, so it's just going to update. But I can drag this down, and, you know, 20% grass looks good here. It's going to go ahead and update that. You can see the result. Now, let's say, for example, I want to make a bunch of changes to my material, and I don't want to have to wait for the execution to happen each time I click. What we can do is we can update this update type drop down into instead of saying something like automatic uh, full resolution, automatic meaning as soon as you make a change, it's going to automatically reload the material. Uh, in this case, we can say manual full resolution, and now I can make some changes here. Uh, and, and manually update the material. So let's bring the grass density up to 100%. Let's go here and, and you know, let's increase the dirt amount. Uh, let's see, we've got a whole bunch of different options here. I could change the soil color or the grass color. In this case, I think I'll go down and change the uh, materials pattern. So let's make it a herringbone pattern, increase the tile count, for example. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. So I'll go down to the bottom and click Update Instance. And that manually triggers the, the refresh for us to get that new version of the material, as you can see here. So that is a brief look at installing the Instamat for Blender integration and also creating a material instance to apply procedural materials to your assets in Blender. Thanks for watching this video on how to get started with Instamat for Blender. If you'd like to learn more about Instamat's integrations, along with how to create textures, materials, and 3D assets with Instamat Studio, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Here you'll find an ever-expanding library of videos covering the ins and outs of Instamat. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. For the latest news about Instamat, please visit our website and follow us on Twitter. You can find all the links in the video description below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.